Previously on Randy Rides. So what I'm doing here is giving you a demonstration of the stock light, which is going on right now. But honestly, the red power light, not sure if it's even any better at all. <laughs> Yeah, much sturdier, doesn't bounce up and down. Brighter in the middle and on the sides. And it's not super dark out and there's street lights, so that helps. We'll try to go over here to the dark spot right here, just so you can see. Much more visible than the stock headlight much more visible than the red power headlight so this one's a winner it's cheaper and all you got to do is a couple easy wiring things so i'm going to preface this by saying this headlight is compatible with a lot of e-bikes so if you want to try it on one of yours it should work fine and this process is the same no matter what kind of e-bike you have so what we're going to do is take this light that I got off of Amazon. I actually have two. I have one on my other e-bike that it works great and that's why I bought it. And it's super bright for what it is and it works really good. It runs off the battery of the bike and you don't have to worry about any batteries being recharged except the bike battery. So you're going to need a plug and this is going to plug directly into the factory plug. Now we need the male end. So you can either take the one off your ideal headlight and cut that, or you can go buy one. That way you still have that one left over if you ever want to go back. I decided to get a extra cable and I'll be able to use two because it's mail to mail. Um, so really we only need one. We're just going to cut it in half and use one side. So then what you're going to do is strip off the black coating that covers up the two positive and negative wires. And this will basically go back to the controller and power the headlight. And what we'll do is we'll strip those two little cables. It'll either be black and white or black and red. It just depends on what side you're working on and what kind of light you got and all that. Everybody uses different cables. It just depends on what's available. You'll strip off the ends of each of the cables on both sides. So there'll be four cables total. Two on the headlight and two on the plug. And then we're going to need some heat shrink and heat shrink basically just once you heat it up it shrinks onto the solder connection and i'm going to show you all that and that whole step so you'll need two thin pieces and one big piece now you're going to slide that big piece over your entire cable and we'll use that later so just slide it down and we'll worry about it in a second and then we'll take those two small thin heat shrinks and we'll cut them down to about an inch and we just need an inch of it for what we're doing here. And we'll slide the thin pieces of heat shrink down the white and black cable. And just make sure your cables are really tight so there's no strands or anything that are hitting the heat shrink. And then we're going to take those cables and we're going to bend the metal end and we're going to make little hooks on all four. And then you'll see what we do next. So then what you do is you just hook those two together and you kind of squeeze the cables together, get it kind of nice and flush and flat, as flat as possible. And then you'll just twist them, kind of wrap them around each other. And basically we're just securing them. So when we go in and we solder, the cables hold together and you don't have to worry about them coming apart. So the cable's pretty thick so it'll hold up pretty good you don't need any alligator clips or anything like that you'll just set them down get some solder and your soldering iron and this is the proper way to do it um, just heat up your hot heat up your wire and your solder and then just kind of melt the solder onto the wire now you don't want a whole big clob of it because it gets really messy and you basically have to start over but uh, just get enough on there that it's going to cover the wire and then what you can do is kind of use it like a paintbrush and you'll heat up that solder that's already on the wire and kind of just thin it out. 
that should hold your wire together so when you put your heat shrink over it everything holds in place and then you don't have to worry about it coming off so you're going to heat up the heat shrink with either a lighter or a hair dryer or a heat gun or something like that and then once you get the heat shrink over the cables you're going to take the bigger one and you're going to slide that over and you're going to heat that one up as well and it's basically going to shrink everything down into a really small condensed package and it looks factory pretty much so I had a lot of excess cable here so what I did is I took the thin wires and kind of folded them and bent them so they were kind of bunched together and then I took that heat shrink and kind of shoved everything inside of that so I could cover up all the wire and it would just be like one black cable all the way across so we're going to take this heat shrink, we're going to heat it up the same way, flatten everything down, and here's a close-up shot so you can kind of see how that process works. But it's just basically uh, like a rubber material and it shrinks down and it covers up everything and doesn't move after that. And then I usually just press it down because it's still pretty warm at that point, and then it'll kind of just form to the wires. And then an uh, extra step that I do that you don't have to do, but um, I like things that look pretty is I'll take some electrical tape and I'll cut them up in squares and then I'll take each square and go around the cable until there's a you know a strand of electrical tape going all the way down the cable so it looks nice to get an electrical tape to be activated you really have to pull on it so if you're having problems with it sticking just pull on it a little bit and that'll allow you to to get it to be sticky so it wraps around the cable like so so you use about three or four and that's about all you need to do and then you're ready to plug it in and test it and see if it works so plug your plug that we just made turn on your bike and turn on the headlight and as you can see our work was successful if yours was it will do the same if it doesn't work you may have your wires backwards or you may have a nick somewhere so make sure that you you really investigate it if it doesn't work um, but you can start the whole process over once you do it a couple times it gets easier uh, it's just really I've been doing it for a long long time so I know how to wire um, it's just something that you, you have to learn like everything else and then what you'll do is you'll strap the existing cable as you can see I have a bunch of it um, I like to have extra just in case later on down the road I decide to to change some things or you know you never know what will happen but you can zip tie those underneath the basket now you don't want them on top of the basket because if you put it on top and then you lay something on it you're going to damage those cables so I always wire everything up underneath the uh, basket and then just kind of hide it as much as you can with the cables and use as many zip ties as you want to make it all look really nice so here's some more ride footage all right this is the next day following my video that I made yesterday I want to do a little bit more ride footage for you guys to show you what this headlight can do. <laughs> a little bouncy road, but I wanted to go down a few streets that are really dark so you guys can see how powerful this light is. And really to point out a couple of the main advantages of going with a light like this, and I didn't mention it in the video. The biggest advantage to going with a light that's wired into your controller is that you don't have to worry about charging the batteries. You don't have to pull it off your bike and hook a USB cable up to it. And if it's powerful enough for you to be able to see, it's really all you need. Now I do have a light on my helmet too. And as you can tell, it's pretty dark over here. The light works great. You don't need another light, another headlight at least. It wouldn't hurt you to have a few lights in the back I'm probably going to hook one up, but so I'm just going to drive around this neighborhood I'm in. <laughs> I didn't want to go too, too far away, but I did want to go to a few dark spots. And where are we going to go? Let's see if we can get past this guy real quick. Oh, we'll go down this road. I've never been down this way before. Not even sure if it goes anywhere. Sometimes these roads end up on really fast roads out of nowhere or hilly roads. But 
it's pretty dark over here minimal street lamps if you didn't have a light or you had the stock aerial rider light on here oh that's really dark back there let's go that way if you had the stock headlight on you would not be able to see none of this stuff you would be blind trust me i know i rode home in the dark once uh at a trail i still had probably six miles left and uh it was really buggy that night and it sucked because i couldn't see i was getting hit by bugs and i wish i would have had this headlight because it really lights up the whole road now i got it pointing down to where it won't blind drivers or anything the beam of lights going straight down if you guys can even see me right now but luckily when i got stuck in the dark i didn't really realize how late it was uh, I had my helmet light, which is lucky because it did work fairly well, but not as good as this. Now I have no clue where I am. I've never been back here before, but I saw a dark street. Figured it would be cool to take the, light, the bike down there. It's not like people can't see me. I got my wheel lights on too. Can you see them? Oh, you probably can't see them. I can see them now, they look really sweet. This is a pretty big hill. Let's kick it up a few notches. This is Summit. All right, let's go find out. I don't mind exploring now that I can actually see at night. Other advantages, you know, it's it's still about the same size as the. Yeah, oh shit! This is a, this is bulls. And this has no outlet. Oh, okay, bulls goes all the way up to where it was. I think what I'm gonna do. Let's go back. <laughs> I don't want to get too far off during the night time. But as you can tell, it's pretty dark on the street. There is one light right there for the flag and one on the house. I'm going to learn all kinds of new stuff. That's good to know. Maybe I can make it to more places without the car. It's a pretty big hill too. Yeah, on the bracket it works pretty well. Uh, it's a little bit long after you bend it so you can cut that off with like a Dremel tool or something hacksaw if you wanted you could bend it up underneath the bracket that's on the basket and this will work if you don't have a basket too i just have one that's why you saw it in the video but yeah you can mount this on pretty much any e-bike that is 12 volt through 85 volt i believe is the numbers and i think i need to go this way which is nice. So if you have a different e-bike other than a ride deal and you're watching this video, well, guess what? You're in luck. This upgrade is gonna work for your bike too, most likely. 
if you have a headlight plug and a headlight uh, button on your controller I'm sure you do most every e-bike has one so I know it will work with electric bikes for sure because I have one god you can't see cars sometimes they're probably like what's that blue streak that just went by But I do need to do maintenance on my bike. I'm well over 500 miles now, so it's due. I will most likely be filming that video here soon. Um, I have to plan it out all the way. I already have most of the plans in my head, but I gotta get them on paper. I also need to, oh, I was, I was also waiting for a certain something to use in my video. So you'll see that on my ideal maintenance video so you'll see uh, here shortly probably the next week or so a 500 mile maintenance video on the aerial rider ideal I'll also go through a few things that you should check on a regular basis uh, during any time that you're biking whether that's you know 100 miles a thousand miles uh, 2000 things that you should really look out for and keep track of after every ride or every other ride whichever gotta remember where i'm at here doing this with zero directions and oh yeah so that'll about wrap it up for this video i just wanted to show you a little bit more about what this light can do I'm very impressed with it, always have been since I installed it on my other bike. If you get it, I, I can give you a pretty good guarantee that you're going to like it as well, as long as it is compatible with your bike, and sometimes it's a toss-up, so take care of your wires, and if you need to return it, you know, Amazon has that awesome return policy, so just keep that in mind, but I'll leave a link in the description to the headlight to the parts that you need, to the stripping, the soldering iron I used, solder, things like that. Things that you would need to do this. That way you uh, have a direct place to get them. Like I said in the video, I'll have a full parts list down below in the description. And I'll see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this was helpful for you. If it was, go down and hit that like button. It really helps out the channel when you do that. And if you subscribe, you get to see more videos like this. And I'll see you in the next one. Oh, by the way, I might be getting another bike. Could you imagine that? <laughs>